Yeah, so what is the technological singularity? I'm going to take a, a crack at um, providing my definition. Um, but as we sort of jump off from this concept of us being able to do this movie that we did, it, it's, um, it stems from the, the increase, the exponential increase in price performance uh, in information technology, and that's caused by uh, the exponential increase in um, the processing power of computers. And uh, that's that's something that um, Ray Kurzweil has called the law of accelerating returns. So uh, Kurzweil's a a fellow futurist, and if you're if you're a, a newbie to the singularity and the technological singularity, you you might not have heard of him, but most people listening to the podcast probably have, but we should always gear things to make sure newbies feel okay too, uh, and learn, um, because, uh, because a lot of people are just being introduced to these subjects almost for the first time. Mm -hmm. So Ray Kurzweil is currently, um, I think he's the, one of the directors of engineering, uh, at Google and, um, and is, I guess he's famous for a lot of stuff. He's he's got a lot of patents. He's an inventor, mm. and uh, and a company that he started uh, that that was for turning text into speech, and also for computers to be able to recognize human speech and turn it in back into text. Uh, a, a company that became Siri, um, was, uh, which purchased by Apple a few years before, um, Siri appeared. Uh, and I, I think he's working on similar things, although they don't say exactly what it is, but I think he's working on similar things with Google to help them with their Google search. That was fascinating. Uh, that would be so handy when it comes to EDR for a movie. Hmm. Adobe Edition used to have that, but they never brought it to life for some reason. Just still sad because if our actors go out to Thailand or somewhere else and we just need a line from them, it would be nice to just type it out and hmm. have their voices there. Like deep fake, but yeah. voice. So what is ADR? You don't need to give the, the technical definition, but the uh, most of the audience wouldn't know what it is. So Well, voice that we record in the studio because we can get clean sound on the day mm -hmm. or to just adjust the way they deliver the line, which you are very particular about. I'm very particular about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm very particular about it. Uh, okay. So I, I'm a really big fan of digital filmmaking for mm -hmm. sure. And, um, and so uh, when, when we're recording sound, for a movie, sometimes something happens. Like an actor can can uh, have a very good take, but they may shuffle their foot, for instance, and they're standing on some gravel. and And um, no matter what you do, you can't remove it. You, know, like you can't separate it from their speech, and uh, you get this very aggravating noise. Um, and you can't even tell it's gravel, and you can't understand what they're saying. So you have to have the actors uh, either come back in or or wherever they are in the world get into a recording studio mm -hmm. and essentially they're just uh, like lip syncing their their own performance right. and and giving you some material that you can put into the movie um, and there's a lot you can do with software now so that you can you can change a performance so mm -hmm. if you end up um, like you may like how the actor looks when they're delivering their lines which is great but uh, sometimes especially when they come in and they do ADR they might not sound quite the same uh the energy level is different or whatever it is but you can do a lot to manipulate that and we do it a lot mm -hmm. um so the so you can manipulate even the tone of something that someone is uh saying or mm -hmm. you can you can lower someone's voice or you can um you, like a deeper pitch or a higher pitch there's mm -hmm. a lot you can do digitally what would be wonderful is if an actor isn't around, but you've got enough of a sample of their voice is what you're saying, which is something that people can do visually now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could actually go in and then, you know, here's the line and yeah. say what kind of emotion you want mm -hmm. and, and get a pretty good 
reading of a line. Yeah, that'd be uh, wonderful. Yeah, that there there is some software like this that is in early stages. Mm -hmm. I've, I've read about it. It's not, but it hasn't been publicly available. Right. Um, but it would certainly be helpful there. It has a lot of not so great applications too. Mm -hmm. But again, another thing that we can talk about. Um, in a future, that's what I mean. The singularity just gives and gives and gives. We won't even be able to touch the surface. It's like Christmas. Uh, and, and so, uh, so back to Kurzweil. Uh, he's he's not the uh, he's not the guy that founded the singularity. He just mm -hmm. has become uh, one of the figureheads, I suppose. Right. And uh, he he wrote a book in two thousand and five called uh, "The Singularity Is Near." And, and that's one of the things that is so fascinating is that um, Ray thinks that the technological singularity is uh, just a few years away. You know, he wrote that in 2005, but uh, Ray believes that the singularity, ba based on mathematical models and just um, an educated guess, really, but he's predicting that by 2045, so now only uh, about 25 years away, but another one of his big predictions was that um, artificial intelligence, so artificial general intelligence, and what artificial general intelligence means is an intelligence that's very much like a human. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly like a human, but it can't just be narrow intelligence because there's narrow artificial intelligence that we already have that can do amazing things like mm -hmm. drive cars or um, or the, the uh, YouTube algorithm is narrow artificial intelligence. It can do some things way better than a person can. Mm -hmm. Really just one thing, right. which is figure out what someone is going to want to watch, but it can't then give a great philosophical answer to you. If you ask it a, a question, I can't even do something simple like, Hey, I want a beer YouTube algorithm, go get it. Uh, but, but this sort of AI that we're talking about, a general AI would be able to do that and would be able to pass something called the Turing test. And we'll get into what that is, but, uh, it, what that means is it would essentially be able to fool people mm -hmm. into, uh, if you, if you, if you couldn't see, like, it's not a robot necessarily talking to you, but you're just getting text answers and you have, you're asking the same question to humans uh, that you're asking to this AI that, that the majority of judges wouldn't be able to tell the, the difference. Right. Uh, and, and at that point you would have to say, well, let's, this is a, an artificial, uh, human level general intelligence. Mm -hmm. And, um, and what happens very shortly after that is super intelligence, because unlike us, uh, an artificial intelligence should be able to upgrade itself beyond its capabilities pretty mm -hmm. easily. Um, and, and then after that, yeah, it's literally sometimes called the intelligence explosion and, and as it should be, um, it, I mean, that is, that, that's a crazy event. It's like the big bang. Um, so, so what is the, the definition? Um, it's a, it's a point in the future where it's, it's not just the human level machine intelligence that we come up with. That's not all it is. And it's not just even superhuman level machine intelligence. Those things are really, really integral. But the, the main thing is that because of this unbelievable artificial intelligence that will be surrounding us and all of these applications that are going to be harder and harder for us to uh, imagine from this current vantage point. But as we get closer to it, it will make more sense to us. Mm -hmm. um, but there will be a point where if you yourself are not cognitively enhanced, so if you don't have something like uh, Elon Musk's uh, Neuralink, a, a better version than, than what they're talking about now, which is already so impressive, but, but something that would make you a hybrid essentially uh, you, where you would at least be partially an artificial intelligence yourself because you've combined your intelligence with something inorganic uh, and upgraded yourself, mm -hmm. that that the improvements in information technology would be happening so rapidly and therefore basically all technology that you just would not be able to understand what's going on anymore. So, it, so in a real sense, you'd be left behind. 
um, you'd be human, mm. but the species would have turned itself into post-humans um, in whatever form that would be. And, and it's because of that that we can't really write a, a movie or a book that is post-singularity. I mean, some people uh, claim to do that, but you can't really do it. Um, you could make the argument that, okay, it's post-singularity and we're in some outside of this room is a world that you can't fathom. Right. But here's some characters that are stuck inside the room. Um, maybe. But as soon as you open the door and you let the characters walk out, it's by definition not possible for a novelist or, or anyone else to uh, imagine what that would be, at least not from our vantage point. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, hopefully that definition will make sense and has people up to speed enough that um, we can start delving deeper into the concepts. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you.